Hey YouTube, Orca here. In today's video, I want to share my support tier list for low rank play in Smite Rank Conquest. This tier list is for support players who are stuck in bronze, silver, and even gold, and want to climb the ranked ladder. I'll be giving you guys the best and worst support guards to play, as well as explanations for the tier placements. If you want more Smite content, subscribe to my channel and follow me on Twitch TV slash Abyssalorca for more fun gaming content. Before we get started with the tier list, I would like to mention that when you look at other tier lists here on YouTube from content creators such as Weekend or other streamers and professional players, that those tier lists are meant more for high levels of play in Smite Conquest and do not reflect on the quality of play or meta of lower ranked elo those two lists are meant for diamond asters gm and even professional sbl play the way those professional or high ranked players are playing the game and how the meta is like what items and builds are being used and who the players are playing against are all completely different from bronze silver and gold levels of play you'll often see content creators put gods like arachne or anubis in f tier well, in reality, those gods are really strong at lower levels of play and ranked. So be careful of those tier lists and just keep in mind to what target audience the tier lists are meant for. I don't see a lot of tier lists for low elo play here on YouTube for Smite. And I really want to help out the support players who are struggling to climb out of bronze, silver, and gold with the help of you know, strong, impactful god picks from this tier list. So with all that out of the way, let's get started with the tier list. Starting off with the Guardians here, Magical, Damage, Tanks, the safest option, the best options really, if you are looking to fill out your team composition in Smite Rank Conquest, Guardians are the best and safest way to go. Starting off here with Cthulhu, our most recent Guardian release. Cthulhu is incredible. This character is everything that we're looking for in a support at low elo play. Cthulhu has high damage, really good engage, strong pressure and aggression, and a powerful team fight ult. His whole kit is what we're looking for when we want to pick our support god. At low elo, your teammates most likely are going to be bad. They're not going to be doing damage or you know, playing the tank role correctly, they just aren't going to be playing their roles effectively and they won't know their responsibilities. So it's up to you as a support to do the damage and also tank. And in that way, your teammates don't have to do too much. And you just want to kind of carry the game, uh, snowball, be aggressive, have pressure, uh, rotate, you know, invade the enemy jungle, um, rotate to mid, help out in solo, um, just want to help around the map, uh, just kind of, you know, do damage, create pressure, have a high aggressive play style, and that way you can win games very easily at low elo. And Cthulhu does that. He's so powerful. If Cthulhu is not banned, you pick him. Even if he gets nerfed, he probably falls to like A or B tier. Cthulhu is a powerful guardian, really, really strong support, and this is the kind of character we need in the support role at silver, bronze, and gold level of play. Up next, we have Ares. Ares is interesting because if you can successfully hit his chains, his one, S tier. But if you are not good at hitting the one consistently, E tier. But I'm going to put Ares B tier because even if you hit those chains and follow it up with the flamethrower, the three, Ares can do some pretty strong damage. Um, the one and the three is all you need in, in the early game to kind of, you know, create pressure, do really strong damage. The chains kind of, you know, stop the enemies from escaping and the fire just kind of burns them and you can get some strong damage numbers across. His two is good utility, his passive, you're building aurora items, get more magical damage as the game goes on, get stronger. Um, Ares, really good kit, especially with his ultimate that makes setting up team fights and you know doing wombo combos and ultimates really easy. Uh, players at low elo do not buy beads, they disrespect Ares and they get punished for that. And if they are, you know, buying beads and using that, well, that's, you know, beads down. 
that's really good value there. So Aries, powerful pick, really strong guardian. Ardeo, C tier. She's kind of strong. Her passive makes it so that her damaging abilities shred the enemy's protections, makes it easier for you and your team to do damage. Her one is pretty strong, and she has really good lockdown, utility, healing. But the problem with Ardeo is that she has mana issues. She runs out of mana very fast. You have to manage all her abilities. She's a stance switcher, a bit complex to play. So Ardeo, I think she's okay, but a bit hard to play. And in the early game, you're going to be running out of mana very fast. You have to manage that mana and be careful um, about you know not spamming too much with your abilities. Um, she can sort of you know create pressure, win lane, uh, but um, yeah, Ardeo, probably going to put her here in the C tier. Next up, we have Athena. Athena, I like her a lot, but unfortunately, I have to put her. I put her in C tier because Athena, her early game is really strong. Um, she has the taunt and the shield, uh, good wave clear from the shield strike, and in combination with the taunt, you can get some really good uh, early game kills. But the problem is, as the game goes on, Athena kind of becomes more of a frontline utility character. Her damage kind of drops off. Uh, and she, you know, won't really carry in that sense. Uh, she just wants to kind of engage, initiate, uh, taunt multiple people, uh, and hopefully, you know, with that kind of setup, your team can capitalize on her uh, plays. So if your team can't really, you know, uh, follow along, then Athena kind of loses some value. Um, her ultimate's pretty good for rotations, and late game, you can just kind of ult your solo or assassin and help them out. Uh, Athena, decent standard pick. Uh, I like her, but I don't think she's that strong. Um, but a character that is strong, Bacchus, Bacchus, A tier. This character is so underrated. Bacchus is incredible. Uh, whether it's belly flop into the burp or burp into the belly flop, the setup potential and the damage output from Bacchus is incredible. He is so strong, uh, just incredible lane presence pressure, damage, aggression, and the ultimate just makes getting killed so easy. He's fun to play. Um, the roaming potential is really good on him. And uh, you just got to have to watch out for enemies that disrupt your burp. Other than that, Bacchus is a powerful pick, really, really strong guardian, and he will win you games at low elo play. Next up, we have Kabraken. Kabraken's really strong, but there is one issue, and that's Kabrakan wants to just go forward. When he initiates, there's no going back. He can't really escape. He doesn't have any uh, movement abilities uh, like d dashes or jumps. Uh, Kabrakan is an initiator. He has strong damage. Uh, his 1-2 combo can really just stun lock uh, and get some really easy early game kills in the dual lane. Um, but the problem is, if you fall behind or if it's a close game, you really have to make you know, good decisions uh, and, and play wisely with Kabrakan. Uh, but the damage on Kabrakan is really strong, high damage numbers. Uh, the three is good crowd control, you can stack up the passive so you can use the stun on the two. Um, and his kit is just really good, especially the ultimate can just kind of lock down enemies, especially enemies that have no escape. Uh, you can get some easy kills on them. Uh, his damage kind of falls off late game, but still, a uh, really powerful god. Kabrakan definitely be a tier somewhere around there. Uh, Cerberus also really good god. Put him B tier here. The thing about Cerberus is that his one is very hard to use and master. If you can land that stun from the one, uh, you're good to go. He becomes a really strong pick. Uh, his two alone just gives him so much wave clear and damage. He has anti heal. Uh, he has a nice leap that combos off with the ultimate, uh, which like Ares, um, if the enemy don't have beads. You can make some good setups. Uh, Cerberus, really strong god. Uh, good damage on the two. Uh, pretty underrated and definitely a strong pick uh, for Rank Conquest. Fafnir, D tier. Um, although his ultimate form is really powerful, in his dragon form he has lots of damage. Uh, you know, Really good damage numbers and output with his basic attacks. The problem with Fafnir is that he's a very niche pick. His two is... Really only good if you have multiple hunters or attack speed characters on your team. Um, and his hammer and a lot of his crowd control, his stuns, his lockdown is really hard to confirm and just use overall. His kit is very clunky. And again, even though he has some good damage numbers in his ultimate, 
overall the kit is very hard to master and get used to and i would definitely say this is one of the characters you kind of maybe want to stay away from or only play in certain situations uh ganesha sorry mr elephant but this is not what we're looking for um utility based characters you're not going to have much success at low elo your teammates are not really good your ad carry partner probably isn't good and your team won't take advantage of the utility and uh, buffs and heals and whatnot that you can give. Um, you know, Ganesha's ult is good for team fights, but other than that, you know, I don't care if you have 30, 40 assists, no kills, no deaths. Ganesh is pretty useless at low elo. Same thing with Geb. He's just not really good. A laning phase is really poor. He excels at late game. Um, the ult is great for setting up team fights. Uh, and you know helping your team with peel and whatnot, but still what are you gonna use a shield on? You know if your squishy is your back one isn't good shield is not really gonna help um, again utility gods Just not gonna work out at low elo Hades is not a guardian. He's not a support. I don't know why he's in here. So we're just gonna skip him uh, Gunder. Um Yurin Gunder is a better solo laner but he can still function really well in the support role. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of setup in terms of uh, getting that pool down and then uh, generating more pools and using your two to combo off of all of it. Um, and you might be interrupted with your wind up with the two, um, but when you can get all that damage off and can confirm the fear, uh, your man got there, uh, his, you know, his kit is really strong. He generates a lot of damage, a uh, good zoning in terms of you know team fights and uh, objective play, and his ultimate is incredible. He can disrupt the enemy team, cause havoc, uh, split everyone up, um, and uh, at low elo people can't really juke well. The positioning is bad, so the ultimate is a lot easier to confirm. So Yerman Gander, really strong support pick, really big force and presence in that dual lane. Um, Kepri, we're going back to a utility support, not what we're looking for. Um, he has a good laning phase, good wave through on the two, uh, good setup on the, you know, the root and the grab, good fee peeling, um, kind of good for an aggressive guardian, I guess, um, but his ult is pretty useless, who are you going to ult, uh, no one's worth that, like, bronze and silver level, um, so Kepri, maybe D tier, but I'm just going to put him at the E tier here, Kumbakarna, C tier, Kumba, really strong guard, early game, he can use his one to poke the enemy, and get some harass and damage. Um, laning phase, he's really good. His entire kit is based around crowd control. Uh, defensively, he can, you know, appeal and uh, protect his backline really well. Um, and offensively, he can, you know, zone enemies away, set up plays, um, initiate, um, and really punish enemies who are out of position with his crowd control. Uh, his three is really strong. Press a button, the enemy go to sleep. Um, his two is a good route. Um, overall, in the laning phase, he's really aggressive. He can make plays happen. Uh, he can punish the enemy, disrupt them. And his ultimate is good for setting up you know, combos. The problem with Kumba is, late game, he just becomes a CC bot. And if your team uh, cannot follow up on your plays, it doesn't matter if you have the perfect setups, perfect engages, um, if your team cannot sort of uh, coordinate with you and follow up on the crowd control, then Kuma kind of is useless. But still, I think his landing phase is really strong. Um, he's really good throughout all stages of the game. You just have to have some good teammates to back Kumba up. Kuzumbo, I hate this turtle, but B tier. Uh, Kuzumbo is really strong. His one, the turtle... It's really good poke and harass in the uh, laning phase, uh, and it has a good slow effect on it as well. Um, combo it off with the three to kind of push enemies into your minions or into a, you know, uh, a wall, and your team can kind of follow up. Um, and the two is good for just kind of uh, returning damage. Uh, overall, Kuzembo has a really strong uh, kit combined with the ultimate for massive disruption and really good solid damage numbers. Um, Kuzumbo just is really annoying to play against. Uh, you're not going to be dying a lot. The enemy at low elo really doesn't know how to play against Kuzumbo. So, I don't like this guy's kit or theme, but um, <laughs> he is a good character, I have to admit. Sobek, B tier, very versatile character. Uh, the one 
is a bit hard to get used to, like the lunge and pluck. You have to kind of time it right and practice. But when you can hit that pluck and punish the enemy, um, especially at low elo where people don't have good positioning, uh, Sobex 1 can be a game changer. Um, you can really just punish uh, squishies or assassins who are um, not in the right spot. Um, and you can just fling them into your team and then capitalize on that play. His 2 is good for just, you know, peeling or getting people off you. The 3 has anti-heal, which is incredible if you're up against, like, Anubis or Hell. Um, and its ultimate is massive. I mean, the slow and then the charge up to get that big damage output is really good. Sobek, very strong versus Hell Guardian. Sylvanas, so I'm sorry. This guy is just clunky to play, very slow. Uh, the grab or hook, whatever you want to call it, is really bad. It just doesn't feel right in a third-person mobile game. Overall, this character is just not fun to play and not what we're looking for. His healing is terrible. It's just really bad to play E-tier. Terra, A-tier, really powerful goddess, um, really, really strong support, especially once you hit, you know, level 3 and get your ultimate. Um, level 1 or 2, it's kind of uh, a bit weird playing her. But once you get all her abilities online and whatnot, Terra can be a really powerful guardian. Um, just the setup potential, the aggression, um, and the engage from Terra's abilities uh, is incredible. Uh, you know, you use her three, use her one to kind of you know root the enemy, and then use her two to stun them. Um, the damage output is really strong as well. Uh, and then if you start everything off with the ultimate, which uh, helps out your team, you know, it protects them and heals them. But it also lowers the enemy's uh, defenses. So if you ult the enemy and use your combo on them, it does a lot of damage and your teammates can really help clean up team fights. You're going to be winning a ton of skirmishes and team fights with her ultimate alone. Terra, really strong goddess, really good guardian. Highly recommend you pick her up and try playing her. She's really powerful. Um, and again, her aggressive play style is really good for low elo. Zing Ting. Zing, A tier, another great standard, really good guardian pick. Uh, his two and one alone, just you combo off that, um, you're going to be winning lane. And it's just really a strong, versatile kit that this character has. Uh, the, the two is a really good, you know, root and setup ability, follow up with the one. The one alone, this breath attack is really good damage, really good wave clear, and good harass. The three is good for engaging or disengaging. Um, and the ultimate, you just scoop the enemy up, wind them up, and throw them into your team for some big team fight, uh, you know, setup. Um, and overall, Zing Ting is really versatile throughout all stages of the game. He's a really strong guardian. Highly recommend you pick this guy up and try him out at low elo for the support role. Yemoja, S tier, A tier, nope. E tier. I'm sorry. This character is very, very difficult to play. And unless you have really good teammates like in high elo that can, you know, work around her kit and really get the best potential out of her, um, you're just not going to be doing well at low elo with this character. She is so clunky and hard to play, very mechanically intensive and difficult to master. Um, her one, like the stun, and just kind of consistently hitting that stun, it's really difficult to get off. Um, her two, you know, the healing is great for the whole team, um, but it's kind of hard to aim when your team is just running around a lot. Um, and the three, just again, mechanically challenging to get the most out of this ability in terms of escape, uh, locking people down. Um, and the ultimate, I can't tell you how many times my teammates just kind of stopped in front of the ultimate waterfall wall and they think oh i can't go through this like man this character at high and low and if you're a really good support player uh and mechanically you're good you know what you're doing emotion is really strong but at low elo uh for you know low level supports uh beginner supports um and you know in bronze silver and even gold I don't recommend you play this character. She's just really hard to play, um, and you're not going to get the most out of Yemoja if your teammates are just bad. Ymir, A tier. This character is so easy to play, very simple kit, and it's easy to get the hang of things. Um, his one, the wall, is good for you to disengages or you know, 
catching people off guard, disrupting their movement, um, and just kind of, you know, initiating. Uh, the two is really good damage and wage clear in the laning phase. And the three is good for just punishing people out of position, uh, locking people down so your team can, you know, capitalize on that. Uh, and the ultimate, just an insane slow. And then when you charge it up, it's really, really good damage. Uh, but when you combine this whole kit together, Gimir is just so good. Just freeze, two, in the laning phase, easy kills. Or you one, three, and then follow up with an ult. Um, just, you can secure kills so easily with Ymir. Uh, not to mention his passive and his basic attacks. Early game, when you can kind of, you know, use that in combination. Um, just the damage output on Ymir is so good. Very strong character. Uh, at bronze and silver level of play. This character is who you want to be picking and playing. Uh, he's free to play. He's on your roster in the beginning. So uh, definitely go for Ymir if you're trying to climb uh, out of low elo. Warriors, all their tanks with physical damage. Um, they're also very good support picks at low elo. Uh, I would say even better than Guardians because of their aggressive nature and the fact that they can easily snowball the dual lane. Um, and just be the, you know, that second assassin or frontline tank um, that's doing damage and pressure um, to the enemy backline. Warriors are pretty good. I, I would argue that you could play all of these warriors in the support role and carry. Um, I've seen, you know, almost any warrior play in support and do pretty well. Um, you're not going to be peeling. You're not going to be playing defensive or helping your backline. That's not the point, obviously, with these picks. Um, but there certainly are some warriors who are better than others. Um, let's start off with Achilles here. Uh, B tier. Pretty good warrior support. Um, good aggression. In, you know, engage. Uh, his harass is good in lane. Just the stun. The healing. Um, just being really nimble. Just the movement is really good. And the ultimate, you know, just executing low, uh, low health enemies. Uh, pretty good. So Achilles... Is decent, maybe a bit hard to play, but um, Amy Amaterasu, uh, her, her aurora is uh, really good for utility and support. The healing and speed boost is really good. Um, the two does really good damage, might be a bit hard to kind of uh, get used to and aim. And her dash, you know, good engage. Um, her ultimate, uh, really good setup uh, and decent damage. Uh, so Amy, uh, pretty good engage support uh, in the late game. She's going to be pretty good. Wan Yu, probably C tier. His healing isn't the best, um, but his 2 is good for, you know, engaging, uh, slowing. The 3 is good for protection shred, some decent damage in the dual lane. Um, and his ultimate's good for, again, setting up plays, uh, you know, just going into that enemy back line, doing some damage, stunning people. Um, Guan Yu, pretty good support. Um... But honestly, if you really want to play a warrior support, there is no one better than Hercules. If you really want to pick a warrior, just go with Hercules. This character is a monster in the support role. Really powerful. Um, just with the passive and the basic auto attacks, so you're getting some really good damage output there. Uh, but it's all in the combo. The knock-up into the bulldoze. If you can consistently hit that knock up the two into the one, um, you're going to be getting a ton of kills early. Um, at all stages of the game, you're going to be punishing those low elo players who don't know how to position correctly um, and just getting really easy kills. The three, the healing is incredible. No one really builds anti heal at low elo, so Hercules can just run around. And the ultimate, the bowler does insane damage. If you want to get some easy wins at low elo, pick up Hercules and play him in the support role. This character is so good. Um, just the pressure, aggression, and damage is what we are looking for. Uh, Hercules has it. Um, I would even put him S tier, but I might put him here in the A tier. I, I think he's just such a good god. Really good warrior. Horus. I want to put him like B or C tier. You can make an argument that his basic kit, like his abilities are good. But the problem with Horus is he doesn't have an ultimate. At low elo, your teammates aren't getting the most out of his ultimate. No one takes transportation, uh, which even gives a shield upon arrival. Um, his ult also is very clunky, hard to use. 
Um, again, his one and two is really good in laning phase. Like the knock up, good damage, slow. Um, uh, just a really strong uh, setup combo and good damage. Um, but just the ultimate, he, he doesn't have it at the level. No one uses it to you know make plays uh, and group up and kind of uh, you know work as a team. No one does that at low elo. Mage supports, there are some mages that can support and uh, do well in the support role. Keep in mind, if you are playing a mage, um, you know, you are opting into a more uh, squishy and fragile character. Um, you're not going to be, you know, tanky like a guardian or warrior. So just keep that in mind. Um, and yeah, mages, they work really well. They can function uh, as a support. And we have a couple of uh, picks here um, in terms of healing and utility. Aphrodite. She has really good single target healing uh, and really good peel and protection for her teammates. Um, Baron Zombie, he's got some good CC, really good root, and um, his ultimate's good for just crowd control and, uh, you know, peeling, and good uh, healing on, you know, his uh, combos and whatnot. Um, and uh, we have Hell, she has two stances, one damage and more aggressive, and the other, you got your utility and healing. Um, the reason I put these characters C tier is because anti-heal is what's going to make or break these characters. If the enemy team is buying anti-heal, they're going to be at E tier because anti-heal completely screws over um, you know, your healing. But if the enemy team, and this is especially true at low elo, is not buying anti-heal, these characters skyrocket to S tier. They're going to be really, really strong. Um, now keep in mind you have to be building damage so your healing scales and you can be you know doing more damage and healing um so uh these characters it's all about the matchup and if the enemy team is building correctly or how they're building um you know against you know mages like aphrodite baron and hell um you have to kind of keep that in mind as you're playing the game and um uh, at low elo they're definitely you know they're viable they're really good and most games you're gonna get away with picking these characters but I mean, maybe once you get into like gold people are gonna start you know building anti-heal um and being smart um so just kind of be careful with anti-heal uh it's really dangerous for these characters um so yeah but these are three pretty good healing supports that you can play in the support role now if you're looking for more of a damage oriented mage to play in the support role there are some options we have Burr lady over here uh, D tier. Um, her kit is kind of hard to you know use, um, a bit difficult. Uh, her one is really good damage um, and wave clear and harass. But if you're using it offensively, well, there goes your movement ability. Um, her two, the stun, uh, kind of hard to hit. Might take some you know time to get used to that practice. The three is good utility um, with the debuff and whatnot, and uh, the ultimate is pretty good. Uh, you know you charge it up all the way. Uh, it's a big AOE field, gives, uh, you know, healing and some good uh, damage. Uh, but it's it's tough to really um, use this efficiently. At low elo, you really have to have some good coordination and teamwork. Um, so this character is, is kind of hard to use, but should be an okay support, definitely. Um, but if you really want to be a damage-dealing mage support, um, Nox is probably the best way to go. I would put her B tier. Um, if you can consistently learn, practice, uh, and just ultimately get down her root silence combo, Nox can be really good at low elo. Um, just, you know, putting down that silence field and then follow up with that root. If you can keep doing that, practice, and get really good at the timing, um, the aiming, and then when you can really effectively, um, you know, consistently Hit that combo, Nox can be really deadly at low elo, really strong. Um, and if you're cut out of position or you're in danger, you can just shadow step into a teammate for safety. And her ultimate is just powerful, really good damage. Nox has some really good damage numbers. Um, you can build her tank, but I recommend building magic damage. Um, you will have that second mage uh, in the back line. Um, and she can really punish people who are in position with her uh, combo. Um, and just overall... A really good mage support um, for your team. Assassin supports really risky, uh, kind of play style to opt in. Yes, you have high damage, but you're very um, you know low on health, not really any defense. 
um, and very squishy in the laning phase. So if you make a mistake um, and you fall behind, it's not really uh, a, a good thing. You're going to be in a rough time uh, for that match. So assassin supports, I've only really seen high elo, uh, you know, or pro players pull these kind of strats off. Um, I do not recommend you guys play this. Stick to Guardian, Warrior, and Mage supports. They're more safe. Um, if you do want to play Assassin supports, go ahead. It is risky. It's a gamble. Some games, you're really good. You're going to pop off. Other games, you're going to be useless. Um, there are a couple of Assassins that can play support because of their kits being um, you know, utility-based, having good CC. Um, and uh, Fenrir, pretty good. Um, you know, His ultimate... You kind of grab someone, bring them back to your team. Really good uh, for you know team fights and whatnot. Um, you know in the laning phase, stack up a passive uh, jump. The stun activates. Follow up with a three. Um, that's some pretty good damage right there. Not to mention the two. It stims, gives you a life steal. So pretty good damage. Um, Neza is one is good for you know lowering the enemy's protection. The disc is really good for harassing and just bounces off the minions. Um, three. You know, satchel, you jump, stun, follow up with the ultimate, which takes them out of, you know, team fights, uh, or you can capitalize on enemies who are out of position and whatnot. Pretty hard to play. You have to really aim a lot. Briar Tasker is another good option. Um, he has some really good global presence with his ultimate. You can engage really well and start up team fights. Um, and laning phase, uh, he's pretty decent, but the hardest thing to do is really hit that three, the acorn. To get the stun, it's pretty tough to do. And finally, Sir Ket, probably the hardest uh, assassin support to pull off. Um, you know, she has really good harass, um, but overall her abilities are hard to use. Uh, the two is a great charm and you know poke tool, but it's really hard to hit and confirm. The one, uh, you know, good damage, but again, really hard to aim with that. You have to angle and use it, you know, correctly. And um, just overall, she's a very fast character. Uh, but really, really hard to play, mechanically intensive. Um, again, I just don't recommend you guys play these characters. Uh, stick to more safer options. Um, assassin supports just, it's a risky thing to do at low elo if you're playing support. And there you guys have it. That's the tier list. Some things up, we want a very aggressive, high damage, high pressure god that can snowball the lane, help around the map, bring pressure, and make it easier for your teammates to get kills. Um, just you know, set up plays. Um, you know, if you can get some kills, and you can win through the support rule that way at low elo. Um, S tier, A tier, B tier, and C tier are wonderful picks. These characters are really strong and will get you wins. Um, D tier, a bit more challenging to play, mechanically intensive, um, but you know it's worth a try if you want. And E tier. I would forget about these characters. They're not good. Here's the thing, though. If you are, you know, playing some of these characters, let's say Kepri or Geb, and you have a 60 to 70% win rate and you're doing really well and succeeding, then go for it. Keep playing those characters. No one's stopping you. Um, so that's the thing with tier lists. You know, you look at some tier lists and you're like, huh, this person put this character in, you know, F or E tier. But this season, I'm doing really well with them. So, you know, it is what it is. This tier list, I just want to show you guys my opinion, uh, my thoughts, what I'm seeing and ranked uh, on, you know, PlayStation. Um, but again, if you guys really want to climb, you got to pick these high aggressive um, characters. Utility and healing is great, um, but at low elo, you're just not going to have teammates that take advantage of the healing and utility. So, uh, gods like Hercules, Bacchus, uh, Ymir are the way to go. Um, if you really want to climb, just S tier, A tier, and B tier. You know, spam those characters, play them, and you will see um, success in your gameplay. You'll climb, and you'll get out of those low elo levels, bronze, silver, and gold. So that's the video, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. You know, share the video. Um, follow me on Twitch TV slash Abyssal Orca. Do all the good stuff, guys. Peace out, YouTube.